tonight on The Al Denson Show. Join Al and his guest, Warren Thompson, Rocket Town Records recording artist, Will Shire. Answering your email questions, Dr. Tim Clinton and Jeff Calhoun and the Al Denson Show Band. Now, here's your host, Al Denson. I love it. I love it when the house is hot. Man, I can tell this house is totally rocking right here. You know what? This is going to be awesome. Welcome to the Al Denson Show. Let me tell you something. We're talking about authority. Now, I'm looking at you guys going, you're going to talk about authority today? Well, the truth is, sure. You know what? We all got a problem with authority. Let's call it, we don't like to be told what to do. I remember, Jeff, you'll like this one. When I was in college, they made me take this music appreciation class. Now, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I'm a music major on a scholarship, and I have to take an appreciation class. So I go in and I meet my professor. His name was Dr. Joe. So I walk in there, and I said, well, this, you know, I appreciate music. This ought to be one of those no-brainer classes. You know what I'm saying? If I just show up, I'll get an A. So I sit down there and listen. And so he puts on this Beethoven thing. And he had this button, he'd push a button, and the needle over there would drop. And when it dropped, it'd start playing this Beethoven thing. And then he'd push it off, and he'd say, now that is music. And I was going, it's going to be a long semester, dude, <laughs> you know. And he said, that is fine music. He said, and he was continuing on to tell us the way he would do it was when he dropped that needle, what we had to do was identify the movement, the sauna, if it was a counter rhythm, a counter melody, and tell him what all it was. I was going, this is going to be hard, man. This is not the same thing. So I kept going to class. Coming in, and, you know, it's, it's, I'm a hyper guy. I like for things to keep moving. So when you just drop the needle and, and, he, and he sit there and kind of close his eyes. I'm just going, come on, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something see what happens. You know, you know, that kind of thing. Well, finally, one day I came in. I said, you know, I can't handle this anymore. So I got this. Do you remember the group called Boston? Do you all remember that? So I got this Boston record. So I thought, this is cool. So I had this record in my little backpack thing. And I said, the minute he gets up to leave for a second, I'm going to nail him. So he gets up to leave. So I run up here and I take that Chopin record. I put the Boston record on. I sit back down. My friends are going, yeah, man, yeah. And I'm going, here it comes, man. So he comes back in and we're sitting there and I'm just sitting there going, this is going to be the proudest moment of my life, you know. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden he reaches up and pushes that button in. And in my heart I can go, here it comes, here it comes, you know. And then he puts it, that thing drops down. And, goes, and all, all my friends are going, yeah, man, yeah. You know? and he, he pushed it up and it stopped again. He looked in the crowd. And, and there's like 200 of us. He said, Denson, get your books, get out. And I'm going, now there's 200 people here. How did he know that was me, you know? But I guess if you know me well enough, you figured it was me. So I thought, no big deal. So I came back on Friday. He said, no, you're out for the semester. So it cost me a whole semester of college. Because you know why? Because a lot of times I don't like to be told what to do. Because we have a problem with authority. And these days, when you talk about public schools, we stop and think, you know, you think teachers have the authority they once had. Do you think kids respect teachers like they used to? You know what I did? I went out, because Jeff and I, man, we travel all over the place in tons of public schools. And we asked kids those questions. And here's what they had to say. Yeah, I think, I think they have a lot. They never had it. <laughs> never, yeah. I mean, whatsoever. Never. No, because they used to be able to, like, slap you on the hand with the ruler and stuff. No, I don't think the teachers have the authority they once had. It's because the students take control, because when the teachers say they're going to punish you, they don't. And that let us know that we have the power. See, teachers now, they think they got all the authority just because yeah, they teach, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they try, they try to tell the students what to do. They come up in your face like, shut up, or try to grab you or whatever, you know what I mean? But they don't really have that much authority because we're high school students, we got our own minds, and we have parents, and we don't really have to listen to them. Pretty overwhelming, it's true. You know, you sit what you just saw and, and stop and think to yourself, you know, it's like when you turn 15, 16, I don't know what age it is, but you turn out and say, you know what? I am old enough that you're not gonna tell me what to do. And that little authority thing comes where we start saying, I wanna be my own boss. I want you to do this. If you're sitting there at home, do me a favor. Go get a pen and a piece of paper. I'm fixing to give you an address. Because what we're talking about when we talk about authority, we're talking about really your character. We're talking about who are you in the dark? And I'm going to give you this as a gift at the end of the show, but I need you to get this. So I want you to get a piece of paper because we want you to interact with us. We want you to find out what's going on. We want you to send your comments and tell us what's going on. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll be right back. I don't want you to go away. we got a pretty exciting show, and we're talking about authority. And the truth is, if you've got a problem with authority, you don't need to touch that dial. You need to listen. But you know what? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just making suggestions. So hang on, guys. We're going to be right back right here on the Alabama Show. 
radical with my phrase. I'm giving props up to my punsy. I can't stop. It's kind of hectic on the street these days. But when you see me in the hood, I'll be giving the hot. You know, a couple years back, they were allowed to hit the kids. And a lot of them had permission to hit the kids. Nowadays, um, kids, they see the teachers, they, they, can, they think they can say whatever they want and be protected by law. Like, oh, the teacher can't do nothing. I can say this, I can say that. They they can call the police now if like get and like they having trouble in the in the home in the room. No, I, I don't believe so. I think nowadays the kids are growing up in rougher housing, you know, living the, the rough lifestyle and now they, they feel that they can rule over whatever they want to rule over, so any teacher's gonna stop them. Nowadays, you know, they can go to the authorities and get parents arrested for child abuse and things of that nature and nobody can stop them. Hey, welcome back to the Al Vincent Show. This is absolutely my favorite part of the show. It always is because we get a chance to interact with you guys. That's why we got the laptop here. We answer some of your emails. We answer some of your letters. It's really unique, and we get some of those hard questions. And you can tell by looking at me, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, so I kind of need some help. So it's neat. We got old Dr. Tim here. Now, this is Dr. Tim Clinton. He's with the American Association of Christian Counselors. And, man, he's got all the answers, and you're still the man. Now, I've got a hard one for you. This, one, this one's from a, a kid, and he's asking a really tough question on authority. He says, he says, my parents aren't Christians, and they won't allow me to go to church. Do I still have to obey my parents even though they won't allow me to go to church? You know, well, I think a lot of kids get caught up in a predicament like that. Um, okay. It may be that you should take a break from church. Now, some people are going to hiccup for a moment. But, see, it could be, too, that the wedge isn't just between you and mom and dad. It could be between God and them, too. That your church attendance could literally drive a wedge between them and God. Well, one thing, too, is that God just is just not at that church. God's anywhere you are, you know what I'm saying? You got it. I mean, I think I'd come back and say church attendance isn't the only way that you keep a meaningful relationship with God. It's very important. But if, if literally it, it was a defiance act between you and your parents, I think I'd step back and maybe earn the right to go. In but other you can words, still get up and spend time with God. You don't need to attend oh, Bedside man, Baptist yeah. and just kind of hang out. No, get up. I, I mean, I'd be invested in my relationship with them. I'd talk to them about sure. my, my role and why I want to go to church, my relationship with God, what it's about. If they wouldn't even talk to me about it, Al, I think it's more about living, uh, living a life out before them that exemplifies Christ with the intent. Probably, in every, usually in every circumstance like this, it's going to be temporary. We, we got another, another email from, from a, a, a parent, and a parent saying, I am a Christian. Should I force my child to go to church if he doesn't want to? Now, there's uh -oh. the opposite. Now, the uh -oh. parents are asking the opposite question. Now, what do they do? Do they force them to go to church? When do they say, ah, you're old enough, you make your own mind up? But what do they do? I know probably everybody in this room has been forced to go to church by mom or dad. Absolutely. I was. It's an important element of life. And I think what you set in stone early on with your children is critical. The earlier, the better. Probably not going to be able to make a teenager go to church. You're just going to get into an all-out war. So you better start it up early. Should you make them go to church? I say yes. Go to the book of Timothy. Paul said to Timothy early on, you know, Timothy, it was the unfeigned faith that was in your mother and your grandmother. How, since that's you good. were little, yes, that's good. you've been taught the Holy Scriptures. And the spiritual heritage piece is valuable. All that comes back to say this, the influence that you have as a parent, and the word to parents is say, get invested. I mean, heavy up front. Get them involved in church. Yeah, it makes, I think, a huge difference, especially for dads. And I also think, if you don't mind, and help me if I'm wrong, I think also one thing you can do is if you're, if you're making your kids go to the church that you want to go to, but they're not getting nothing, there's no department for them, there's no youth oh. for them, they're sitting there just filling in the O's and P's in the board. That could be the whole piece why they don't know how Maybe you need to look around for a church that, that, that has, has a, a youth group that will get them more involved in that. Listen, this is our favorite part because we love to hear from you. So do us a favor. I mean, email us, aldenson at AOL.com, or write us at The Al Denson Show, Box 220, Grapevine, Texas, 76099. Man, we need to hear from you because we'll answer these things every week. Dr. Tim, thank you for being here. You guys don't go away, guys. We're going to be right back, and you're going to love it. Hi, I'm Mark Self, Celebration Ministries. Each week I'd like to share with you just one facet of what Celebration Ministries is doing to reach people for Christ. You know, it is so much more than just this TV show you're watching. We've traveled to hundreds of public schools throughout this year. You know, on any given day, you can hear Al's music on the radio. You can walk into Christian bookstores across the country and pick up his music on CD and the books he's authored. You can even interact with us on the Internet. You know, God is doing tremendous things through Al and through Celebration Ministries. Just take a look at this one aspect. 
Man, I've been doing this for about 15 years, and five years ago, I was in an airplane going from Dallas to San Antonio, when my friend turned to me and said, we got about 45 seconds and we're gonna crash. And we crashed in this little field outside of San Antonio, and man, it was rough times. And I didn't understand why, and I asked God that really tough question, why is this happening to me? You know, when I started looking back at, at, at that point, the 10 years of our ministry, I realized that, man, you know, I was doing a good job of singing Christian music. And, and man, my songs were doing a good job of encouraging Christians and recycling Christian people. Yet, at the same time, my heart was for teenagers. And not only for teenagers, my heart was seeing teenagers give their life to Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, you started watching TV and you saw Columbine, you saw Paducah, you saw Jonesboro. You saw all the tragedy, you saw all the violent acts from all these teenagers. And you started asking why. Well, we came up with a program called When Tragedy Strikes. When tragedy strikes in an area, people always call us. And when they call us, we come in with these books. And we give one of these books to every single student, the same book you see on the screen called When Tragedy Strikes. And we talk to them about how to deal with tragedy. And how all of a sudden it puts a roadblock in, your, in the road that you're walking down of life. But we do our best to help them take the better road and not the bitter road. You know, kids, they, they don't spell love, L-O-V-E. They spell it T-I-M-E. They say, if you love me, you'll spend time with me. And those of you watching, I'm asking you, please, spend time on your knees praying for us as we go into these public schools and try to make a difference for Christ. Hey, at the end of our show, we're going to put up an address. And I want you to send me a letter letting us know that you're going to stand with us, that you're going to pray for us. Because prayer is the only way we're going to effectively change this generation for the gospel of Christ. And I need you to pray with us. You know what? It is true. We all have a problem with authority. And I'm telling you right now, you're looking at me. Listen, I don't like people telling me what to do. I can tell you that flat out. So you know what I did? I went and got an authority on this issue. Man, this guy is a, not only a professor at Vanderbilt University, but he teaches psychology. And he goes around helping different school systems and everything deal with this issue of authority. Now, would y'all please welcome to the Alden Show, Mr. Warren Thompson. Y'all give Dr. Thompson a hand. Look at this. Look at this. I find myself being caught in a circle, going around and singing to all these kids in schools and talking to parents, stuff like that. The, the kids walk up and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 16 years old. I can do what I want to do, and ain't nobody going to tell me what I can do. Then you got the parents going, well, you know, I want to discipline my kid, but if I go too far in this discipline, sure. I've got my kid running going, child abuse, child abuse. And then the teachers are going, forget it. Ain't nothing we can do. Our hands are tied behind our back. They're just going to be the way they are, and that's the way they're going to be, and we just do our best to get to 3.30 and then go home. I'm caught in this web, and I need help. And they said, you demand, I, I can, so help well, us out. One thing we... Uh, always recognize is that kids, teenagers, need some limits. You know, they, they'll tell you they want to do sure. it exactly their way, but they need some limits. The things I notice about kids respecting teachers is, and if you have a good school climate, you're going to have kids who respect teachers, and they'll think some of the teachers are really cool. You know, they say, this, I like this teacher. They, they're real to me. They make jokes. They seem like they like me. And then there's a whole bunch of other teachers that they think are just drawing a paycheck. And so that leads to a climate in a school that's sometimes real negative. Well, uh, okay, well then who's, resp who's responsible for putting that authority in that school system? Is it the kid, the teacher, the parent? Well, or? you know the answer. It's everybody. Well, yeah, uh, how do we get to that? Well, one thing is, especially in high school, parents stay away from high schools because their kids tell them to. Don't okay. come to my school. Absolutely. I don't want you to come to my school. And parents will do that. They're busy. And so one of the magic ingredients is for parents to get right back in that school, get right in the teacher's face, and go to parents' night and support the school and find out what's going on in the school. And we don't, we don't find out what a school is like from our kids. If you don't ask your kid what's the school like, ask your kid, what does your best friend think of Hillsborough High School. He'll tell you what his best friend thinks. He won't tell you what he thinks. But parents are, are staying away from schools, and that's not good. Well, you know what used to take me off is I would come home from school. Mm -hmm. I'd walk in the door. My mom would meet me, say, son, I heard you did blank, blank, blank. I'm going, you know, I just did that 30 minutes ago. <laughs> now, how did I get busted already? And I never knew. These days, that doesn't happen. I, I was Flat think, out doesn't happen. I was thinking you were going to say that parents don't have a clue. Teachers don't have time to call. Uh, but why? Is there some liability issue there? What, what's... I just think teachers have too many kids. You know, a high school teacher has 100, you probably have some teachers in this audience. 
180 kids in a day, they don't have time to call everybody at home. It's just that they can't do that. So the big question to me would be, and I think, I think you know, people that email us ask the question, they say, why? Why do this generation of kids have such a problem with authority? One of the things that we have uh, in this country that we didn't have when you were in school is we have 235 million weapons in this country right today. Are you serious? I, absolutely. One for every man, woman, and child. We didn't have that when we were in school. We didn't have that many weapons. So nowadays when kids get mad and want to settle a score, they have access to a weapon and kids get killed. And that's very bad. So that's a major deal. So what do you think the hope is? How do we change this cycle of downward spiral? How do we well, that? we do it the same way we did with smoking cigarettes. 50 years ago, everybody smoked. You went to see a movie and you saw Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. You don't know who those people are, but we do. And they were smoking cigarettes. Now you don't have that. It took 50 years for us to put smokers outside. And I think it's going to take 50 years for us to do something about violence. But I'm real optimistic that we can do it as if everybody gets on the same page. Well, I guarantee it. They've got their attention. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. right, right now it is a flat-out attention. You know what, guys? We appreciate the fact that you're watching because we all deal with authority. You and I, by the way, we still deal with authority. I got stopped the other night by a policeman. I had to come home and tell my wife. He pulled me over. I was going, the first thing, me rolled down with the driver's license. I was looking at him going, in my head, I'm going, no. I ain't going to give it to you, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the last thing I'm going to do. You know, on the outside, I'm going, if I don't give this to him, I'm going to spend the night in jail. That's right. That's <laughs> you know, right. So, so you gave are, him your license. Absolutely. Yeah, there are right. consequences to the, the decisions we make, you know. And I'm telling you guys, you got to stay tuned. We're, we're going to talk just a little bit more about it because we all deal with this issue of authority. And, and we have an incredible group called Wilshire. They're coming up. You do not want to miss it. So keep yourself tuned right here to the Al Dixon Show. Break the chain. Break the chain. Break the chain. They try to. In some things they do, some things they don't. They just want to be cool. Uh, not at all. Not one bit. Why? Just because kids don't like to be bossed around. They just care about being with their friends and they don't care about teachers at all. It's mainly peer pressure. You want to do what your friends are doing. And to do that, you have to be cool because they're trying to be cool and mouthing off the teachers and stuff. The kids who care about their grades, they, like, they pay attention to the teachers. The kids who just come to school because they have to just make a lot of trouble for other kids.
Wilshire. Now, you can't forget that. Wilshire, Rocket Town Records. You know, I'm just blown away at just, man, just, that song just lays there and just goes, man, you guys do a great job. Thank you. Lori, Micah, yes. Wilshire. That's right. Give them an incredible hand. I thought they did an awesome job. <laughs> now, listen, you're sitting there watching. Don't go away. We're coming right back right here on the Allen Institute. So, so stay tuned. Keep hanging in there with us because we'll be right back. You guys got it. I think most kids in our school respect the authority, but there is a small few that don't. Because they, they got to let the teachers know because they think they ain't hired, and we let them know. I mean, they don't, let us, they, don't, they don't let us express ourselves in the right way, you know what I mean? They always try to close us in. They don't let us do, or they don't provide enough things for us to do, you know what I mean? And nowadays, kids are really disrespectful, but, the, um, but I think that, that that's, just like, that that's just the kid's nature, and they're going to be like that regardless of what people say to them. I don't think they much lost respect. I think they just... They learned how to use the law for their side, for their wrongdoing. Thanks. Well, guys, you know what's funny? I, had, I have the opportunity all the time, just because it's neat how y'all impact us, and we're sitting here talking about authority and just how much mail you guys send us and the emails and stuff. And Jeff, I got a, real, I got a funny uh, email from a kid. He, he sent us an email. He said he was taking a test, you know, and he's taking this test with a teacher, and he thought his teacher was unfair. And a lot of times when you're in an authority situation, you think, you know, the, the thing's happening to me is unfair. So he, so he got this test. He's taking this test. And, and one of the questions, he said, now, this is unfair. He didn't tell us this. He didn't teach us this. This ain't right. So he said, fine, I know what I'm going to do. So he writes down the answer. He writes, only God could know the answer to this question. Merry Christmas. So he turns his paper in. So he's going, that'll show you, man. Next day, he comes back into class, and they're passing out the test. And he gets his test back and looks on it and says, God gets an A. You get an F. Happy New Year. <laughs> you know, and the bottom line is, you know what, we, we kind of all wrestle with authority, you know. We, we struggle with that. And the truth is, those of you watching at home, listen to me. It's a constant battle because none of us really like to be told what to do. And, you know, if you're like me, I, I look at myself and I think uh, when I'm looking at my attributes, what's one of the things that I struggle with the most? And, you know, you're looking at a stubborn guy. I'm a stubborn guy. I'm flat out stubborn, you know. And stubborn is like this. If I was going to describe stubborn and authority thing, here's what it is. It's knowing that, that I do what I'm told to do, and I actually do what I'm told to do. If somebody tells me to do, I do obey authority, but one, I don't like it. Two, I'll drag my feet on it. And three, I'll say, you know, this is not any fun. But that's what a stubborn person does. What happens is, and people always tell me, you can be stubborn all your life, but, but there's some point where all of a sudden your stubbornness runs out and you flip over switch. And all of a sudden, you know what? You're rebellious. And then rebellion is, is when you flip that switch and say, now guess what? Now I'm my own boss and I'm in charge of my own things and whatever happens to me, I'm willing to take the consequences because I'm not going to obey. Once you step across that line, the only way you can flip that switch back and say, man, I just need to go back, is through Christ. Because Christ breeds that character in you. It's an issue of who you are inside. There's a big void there that can only be filled by Christ, and that one authority is God. I want to encourage you, if you're there, listen, here's the only thing you can do. You can hold your hands up and say, God, I can't do anything else. I've got to have your help. I can't turn the switch off, but I want to. And then you look at Christ and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Change me from the inside. Give me the power. Give me the strength to take that switch. And the only way I can do it is you're going to have to put your hand there and help me flip that switch back down. Let me tell you something real quick. It's very simple. In Romans 13, 1, it says this. It says, be subject to higher powers and authority over you, for they are there to minister to you. 
That means your teachers. That means your boss. Those people are in your life because God put them there because he wants to minister to you. That's why they're authority. So I encourage you guys. It's an issue of character. See this book? Who are you in the dark? That's what we're talking about. Who you are on the inside. You got to let go. You got to find out who you are. I want to send you this book. It's a gift from us right here on the Alden's show to you. Man, if you're struggling, I want to help you. Here's what you do. You simply email us at aldensonaol.com or you can write us. The Aldenson Show, Box 220, Grapevine, Texas, 76099. You do that, man. We're going to take care of it. But you know what we want more than anything? We want to breathe into you that Christ loves you. No matter how many mistakes you made or how oftentimes you flip that switch, Christ loves you and he cares for you. Do us a favor. Write us. Let us know what's going on in your life. We want to help you. We want to be there for you. And keep yourself tuned in. Because we want to see you next time on The Alden Show. You guys, let's get it rocking. Thank you so much. Please write to The Al Jensen Show at P.O. Box 220, Grapevine, Texas, 76099. Or email us at aldensen at AOL.com. Or visit our website at www.aldensen.com. Or call us at 1-877-HOPE-101. We received so many calls and letters from parents saying, help me, my kids are out of control. They have no respect for authority, they're hooked on drugs, they're on alcohol, they don't come home at night. What do we do? Well, I want to tell you about a safe place. This place is called Heartland. And Heartland is about restoring your child through a relationship with Jesus Christ. But they're uniquely different in the fact that they offer work programs to also instill discipline in your child and get a pride of respect for work in there. They have a dairy, they got a farm the kids work on. There's a Christian school the kids attend so they continue to get their education. There's recovery centers that the guys stay in. There's girls' homes that the ladies stay in. They hang out with other kids just like them. They're in Bible studies. They're focused programs. And it's all a part of restoring your teenager through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a safe place where you can send your child. If you need help, please email us. We'll send you all kind of information on Heartland. Hey, listen, our kids are worth saving. We've got to act now.